What is going on everyone? I'm Aman. Welcome back to another Frame by Frame spoiler cast. And today I am joined by Mr. Physical Copy himself, Ethan. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm ready to do another spoiler cast with y'all. I'm excited. Let's go. Yeah, it's been a while. The last one we did was Thor, I guess. Yep. But yeah, uh, we're coming back strong with Prey. And uh, joining me also today is Mr. IGN himself. Sam, how are you doing? I'm, it's it's hot in the UK again. It, it's not oh, good yeah. over here. It's bad. Thank God I'm out of there. But um, yeah, also joining <laughs> me today is the man without a nickname. Jemmy, how are you doing? Good. It actually is also hot over here. So I guess we're compatriots over the seas. Sorry, we're all sweating. So uh, I mean, I'm enjoying the weather here in Chicago. It's it's like it's in the it's in the <laughs> low 90s, but uh, it's it's not as hot as I thought. It's not I as hot. You're as hot as I hope you're there for winter, Amon. I really. I do. hope you serve. I it's hope you serve Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor is a lot colder oh, than it's gonna Chicago, be great. I guess. Right? <laughs> if you decide to go for a nice stroll outside at the park, I hope you survive. You gotta do the polar <laughs> plunge, Amon. I want to see you do a polar plunge. Put it on our TikTok. It's gonna oh, be right. a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we start, guys, a quick shout out to our Patreons, Bucky Blue, Hopple, Alpaca Tom, SAZ, and our latest Patreon, Brianna's Mom. If you want to hear your name at the start of every show, make sure to head on over to patreon.com slash save the game media and subscribe to the tier of your choosing to enhance your experience. So guys, today's Polar Cast will be reviewing the recently released Prey on Hulu. And in fact, it was Hulu's biggest ever movie premiere. Um, but yeah, Prey is a prequel to the Predator movie, so... Uh, Sam, I'm going to start off with you. What was your favorite moment in the movie? Um, it's tough. Um, if I had to pick one, maybe the fake out when um, Naru first falls into the mud. Um, because if you've seen any other Predator film, you're like, oh, okay, I get what's about to happen, fine. But it was a fake out. It, it didn't go the way that um, I was anticipating. I thought that that was a nice change of pace um, for a film that on the surface, without going into details, to me is kind of basic in terms of plot and narrative structure. I liked that there was that little bit of misdirection there. Uh, Ethan, what, were your fa- what was your favorite moment? My favorite moment was definitely, I think, when the French trappers tried to use Naru and Tabe as bait um when they were in that sort of foggy dead forest type of area and then predator came out and that's when you really uh realize like oh predator is not going for people who are unarmed and stuff like that that we've known that throughout the rest of the predator movies but they wanted to you know reaffirm that in this movie and then predator comes in and just starts taking out all the french trappers and stuff like that and then you have the big fight scene uh with them against predator i just absolutely love the cinematography of that moment all the fog and stuff like that i love a dark atmosphere in movies and, and stuff like that so uh that was probably my favorite part of the movie good action sequences all through but this was oh, yeah. definitely one of the better scenes in terms of action for me mm-hmm. jemmy what about you honestly it was going to be the same so the same um i think because the thing is i'm not so i'm in general i really love sci-fi horror is probably my favorite genre of horror for some whatever reason, honestly, just due to time, I never got around to the Predator series. So this was my introduction to the Predator series. So tonight I'm going to watch the first movie. Um, uh, awesome. But this, to me, this was, so this was to set it up. That scene, honestly, that was like classic cinematography. That was great. I honestly had a lot of, in the cinematography, I've had a lot of echoes to um, Cameron in, um, in Cameron's work in like Alien and in, uh, what's the name, in uh, Terminator. Mm-hmm. He did Terminator, right? Yeah, Terminator. Uh you had like that in just the fact that, the, as we'll talk about later, the Predator, I thought, was my one of, you know, was really amazing on screen. You know, like, obviously, Anari was phenomenal. The actress, she did phenomenal. But the way in this scene, the Predator, like, completely stole the show. Yeah. And can we all just recognize the it, it was one of the greatest locations to film. I, I read oh, that they filmed right. in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, which yeah. is actually one of the First Nation areas where they actually filmed and stuff like that. And it was just absolutely beautiful and stunning. Every scene, the backdrop of the mountains and the fields, the rolling fields of grain and all that. It was just an absolute beautiful experience watching this movie. Oh, yeah. The cinematography in this movie, top class. But my favorite moment had to be when um, I think it's uh, Naru against a Predator one-on-one. And then her brother, I'm forgetting his name, he just comes in, stabs the Predator. And they're having their little one-to-one, uh, one-on-one, not one-to-one, one-on-one fight. Um, and it looks like his her brother has the upper hand for a certain moment. And then Predator comes in and kills him. I think that was a perfect plot twist moment. Because I thought her brother was going to be the one to kill uh, kill him at the end. And the movie's going to end there. But uh, 
yeah, that was a nice that was a nice thing. Him getting the stab in the stomach there, but uh, but yeah, <laughs> not really a nice thing. But uh, yeah, that was probably my favorite moment. Um, I, that, that sounds so wrong, but uh, yeah, guys, <laughs> Sam, who was your favorite character? Um. There aren't really that many characters to pick from. Yeah, I have is... to say. Should we just talk about Naru in general? No, I because th- my choice isn't isn't Naru. My choice would be Tabe. Um mm-hmm. mainly just because he acted as a really great um sort of uh addition to Naru. Like obviously it's Naru's story being told, but I think that Tabe brings so much um depth and sort of dimensionality to her as a person, um, to them as sort of family, um, and even just like the Comanche tribe as, as a whole, sort of what that means. And for, uh, I can't remember his name, Dakota Beavers, the actor, mm-hmm. for it to be his first ever role, like. Yeah. That was his first ever role in a movie? Yes, yep. it was. Oh, wow, okay. I did not know that. That's, wow. This is honestly surprising. Slight, slightly off topic, but this is honestly, I'm really glad for what it's worth that after quite literal centuries of oppression that Hollywood has finally decided to pay attention, you know, between uh, Echo and the stuff that we saw in Hawkeye and obviously all the characters in here. Like, I think that they've just done a phenomenal job. Well, not, not phenomenal, actually. No, that's idiotic to say. I'm glad that they're starting to do, and I'm glad that we've been able to see phenomenal actors, native actors, and stories be able to start being told finally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, my favorite character uh, in this movie had to be Naru herself. I just really enjoyed her arc of her trying to prove herself that she can be a hunter, uh, her trying to prove it to her brother, because her brother thinks that she doesn't, she she has the brains to be what, what it takes to be a hunter, but her her physic her physicality is not suited to what, what it's what it's what it's like to be a hunter. But that thing she does with the axe, attaching a rope to it, throwing that as a slingshot, getting it back, yeah, her whole her entire character arc was beautiful. And at the end, when she has Predator's head in her hands, that was such a wholesome moment. Um, Ethan, what about you? Who's your favorite character? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Naro as well. Um, I love how you know how much depth her character had and how many different conflicts she had to endure throughout the movie the conflict with the tribe of trying to prove herself the conflict with her brother who is trying to say trying to keep her safe but at the same time trying to hold her back um and then obviously her conflict directly with predator i think she had the most depth i think she had the most interesting character arc out of all the characters in this movie and uh, i think amber mid thunder great casting choice for this character she absolutely killed it i absolutely loved every scene that she was in um, I, I would love to see her in more movies going forward. Uh, Jemmy, what about you? So um, here's my thinking. And again, it's hard because obviously I agree with everything you guys say. But to me, because the plot was, I feel like the strength of this movie was the fact that the plot was basic, but then it excels and it takes a basic stuff. I feel like her character, honestly, is a character that we've seen before. You know, in the same way, I really like her character. I also really like Katara. I also really like Mulan. I also really like Mowgli from uh, the Jungle Book reboot. They all have similar echoes of similar vibe. Um, So I'm actually going to go the Predator itself. Um, I think that that, honestly, the way that, again, I have an immense respect for character uh, actors who, you know, obviously don't get to do anything. You know, they're playing in these monster suits. They're doing it. And the performance, I'm not, I don't know who I need to look it up because I, again, just kind of, I kind of had to just watch this before because uh, I was a Dane bit rushing. I Yes, so whoever that Dane is, I need Deliegro. to look more yeah. into because I really like the performance, again, the stunt work for all of the team. And it's not just all of the performance, because then obviously, you know, this is going to go through the crafting of the suit and the stunt teams that do it. And obviously the multiple stuntmen that they probably have. So props to all of them for bringing this, because I thought that this was already going to be a iconic version of an already iconic character. And, and kind of quickly to build on Jemmy's point, I felt that Predator was able to convey a lot of messages, even without saying anything. I, I, I always felt that this predator was sort of immature and aggressive and how he handled things. He never really took the, the, uh, the enemies that he was facing seriously. And I felt that came back to bite him in the butt a little bit. I think that was interesting because the whole, obviously the whole narrative of predator is that they use humans as a hunting ground to sort of prove themselves. And it kind of really shined in this, that this predator, this specific predator that came down to do his 
whatever you want to call it, his ritual or, mm-hmm. you know, his proving or something like that. He was very immature, very aggressive and stuff like that. So I, I, I felt that that played into the movie very well. Yeah. And the that. fact that he didn't really consider Naru a threat, you know, yep. until, until like the end of the movie. And she's the one who kills him. I think that was, again, perfectly mm-hmm. sums up Naru's arc as a character. Uh, but yeah, moving on from the characters um, onto the production. I thought this movie, um, it, it wasn't a low budget movie. It cost her about a hundred million, but that's sort of the basic precedent for movies uh, in this day and age. So uh, what do you guys think about like the cinematography, the production design, uh, Ethan? Oh, it, it was top class for me. I, you know, I, I absolutely loved it. Um, I felt that the scenes were all beautiful. The, the backdrop, obviously, like I said earlier, Calgary is such a great place to film. Um, out in those in those hills and in those forests and those fields um, I felt that they did a great job with all the scenes um, and then obviously all the fight scenes too I think the fight choreography was absolutely incredible I, I going into this I f- didn't feel like this was going to be like an impressive movie because I'm like oh it's straight to streaming it's a it's kind of a one-off predator movie I wasn't expecting too much but I was really pleasantly surprised with everything they did uh, specifically uh, obviously I talked about the scene where um the trappers were using Naru and Tabe as bait, but I also want to highlight the scene where Naru was running with that one native warrior through the field, and then they did that overhead shot where Predator was running oh, towards yeah. them and moving the cornrows that as he was running towards the forehead. Them. Yep. Yeah, I felt that that whole scene was really cool. It, it felt like a really big blockbuster sort of horror mm-hmm. movie. Um, yep. I've, I've recently been getting into a lot of uh, cool blockbuster horror movies like Old and Midsummer and stuff like that, and I felt that that scene kind of reminded me of that in a way um so i absolutely love those love those scenes yeah uh, my favorite shot actually was when uh nar was walking it was i think trying to get back home and then she just sees a bunch of buffaloes just laid on the field that all, was crazy all skinned. Yeah. you could basically basically just see their flesh and um and their flesh and bones and yeah that was gruesome but that shot when it zooms out and you just see multiple of them i think that was so well done uh, and yeah, the cinematography in this is, was amazing, I think, uh, especially for a streaming movie. Um, again, mm-hmm. there was a lot of debate that could this movie have been gone to live action or is this exclusively a streaming movie? Uh, but Sam, I want to throw it over to you. What do you think about the production design in general? Um, just a, an, that's another good moment, I think, just to cast it back to what you just said about the, the bison. That, that was another fake out that it wasn't the predator that had yep. done that it was the the trappers mm-hmm. um very good fake out um i might kind of disagree um in terms of the production not that it was bad to me by any stretch of the imagination but i think it very much felt like a streaming movie to me um i think that some of the cinematography was really good really inspired at, at moments but i could almost feel the budget at points was holding it just that little bit not enough to be off-putting but i was like okay i i get why they want this to just be on a small screen because it to me it didn't necessarily have those massive super intense moments and you know as much as that sounds like a negative i'm actually going to spin it to a positive well i think that actually makes me like the film more because it almost then has like a gorilla film not handheld, but that kind of vibe where it almost feels like this is documentary-esque where we're, we are seeing something that, it sounds stupid to say, but actually happened. You know, it's it's like historical footage that we're watching as opposed to a big blockbuster where there is maybe more of a disconnect possible there because of the more cinematic explosion-y moments. It was very grounded very gritty. I appreciate it was all filmed on location as opposed to a sound stage somewhere. Um, so yeah, there's give and take. It's good and bad. I think at different points. Uh, Jemmy, what about you? So, yeah, I kind of agree with Sam. Like to me, this feels like a movie that I do like. Okay, this feels like something that should be on streaming. But at the same time, I easily see with just a little bit more how it could have been pushed beyond. I feel like if you know comparative you know streaming or not i feel like this is honestly though for what they worked with because obviously there were some budget constraints for what they worked with i would honestly say this is you know really good for what you consider you know a typical hollywood movie anything beyond it in terms of cinematography honestly you'd be getting into some of that more art house you know uh, roger deacon style slow shots or whatever 
you know, I would say, honestly, there wasn't any particular moment that stood out for me in this against the Norway Sam, but I would say my favorite, if this is a cheat, I don't know. Any shot that focused on nature, honestly, was just breathtaking. So anytime they were specifically focusing on nature, like the hills, like you said, even that bison shot, because again, mirroring the horror kind of that you're like, oh my God, kind of just processing that, but also again, seeing, you know, the backdrop of, you know, we know what happens, obviously, how much bison have been, you know, hunted down, exterminated. So that compared to, you know, the normal majesty of seeing these creatures or how they would be, you know, just storytelling wise, the way they were able to integrate, you know, the natural world as it should be into this type of predator story, I thought really did a good job at letting the cinematography do a lot of good legwork for the storytelling on a more basic story. Yeah, definitely. Um, See, I, I could definitely see this becoming a theatrical movie. Um, it, the only thing it was missing, I don't think it would have done as well in theatrical as it did in streaming because of the, it, it lacked that cinematic, you know, the cinematic feel, the cinematic movie experience nowadays, which is more common, like Marvel movies, Fast and Furious and all of that. I think it lacked that. So I think it wouldn't have done as well in theatrical. I mean, I could also see it because remember, you have that crowd, but you also, the Halloween movies obviously mm-hmm. are very popular. Uh, Jordan Peele movies, you know, so those are, they're, blo- you know, Nope was a blockbuster, but it right. wasn't a so Marvel good. blockbuster, mm-hmm. you know, so I would say, you know, so I think, I think there's an equal chance. It wouldn't find the Marvel crowd, and I don't think it'd attract that much money, but I could but it, definitely but, see it. But it d- certainly would not. Depending on when they release it, like, Mm-hmm. If you release that at a key time when there's not too much, I think it could have worked. It could have worked, but um, I just don't. I just don't think. I just don't feel like it, like if it came out right right now, I don't think it would have worked because you know we have Bullet Train, we have Nope, Nope. I, again, Jordan Peele, he's he's proven himself in his previous movies. You know, Get Out didn't do as well in the box office, but again, it was a fantastic film. Us did better in the box office, and now Nope did quite, just doing quite well. So I just don't feel like. You know, this is the type of movie that would have done well. So uh, I will it was, say it's the type of movie that have been overshadowed. By other so, so I will say real quick in my area, I live in San Antonio, Texas, which is a very, very large city. They did do a theatrical release for Prey in my area. Mm-hmm. And I was curious. So I looked at ticket sales and stuff like that. It, when I looked at Prey on opening weekend, it was about half the theater was th- sold out. And that was online um sales only that i could see so i don't know how many more people came in you know through the doors and bought tickets at the box office but uh it seemed like it was selling pretty well obviously bullet train was the big thing and that was Mm -hmm. what was in the imax theaters and stuff like that but prey was definitely that sort of i don't know what the movie term is for like a double a game you know this was definitely the double a sort of movie that wasn't necessarily an imax but it seemed to be selling well in my area it looks like they probably only did releases in major metropolitan areas though Right. I feel like the one thing that this movie, it kind of depends how they wanted to market it. Because in a way, for what it's worth, kind of the strength of the fact that everyone is so hyped about it is the fact that, to be frank, they didn't really market it that well in the first place until everyone was like kind of two months ago. I was like, oh, there's a Predator movie. Yeah, this out. came out of nowhere for me. I yeah. didn't yeah. even so, know about this. You know, like I vaguely, okay, because here's the thing. They said it and I was like, wait a minute. And my mind flashed back to um, whoever it was because I was under the afterglow of Kevin Feige saying we're getting a Fantastic Four movie. But I vaguely remember that I think they said something about making a straight to streaming Predator movie on the same day because Hulu was included in that. But even then, the fact that it kind of went unnoticed. I think, you know, it kind of depends how they would have to paint it. So I think its success would mostly kind of be up to it. Because again, I'm assuming if they wanted to release it, they probably wouldn't have released it against a movie where you're still feeling the after effects of Thor and Bullet Train and stuff like that. They probably would have picked a more opportune time. But at the same time, again, I do feel like if you, you know, for what it's worth, a lot of things, like like you were talking about, limited releases have been proven viable. Some things like, you know, for what everywhere all at once, even though it didn't play in some theaters, actually kind of found some success by being a limited release because now it's been able to come back again once it found a more audience. Now they got kind of word of mouth. So it's possible. But yeah, let's move on to our general thoughts and our rating of uh, uh, out of 10. So uh, I'm going to throw it over to you, Sam. Your general thoughts on the movie and then sum it up in a rating out of 10. Okay. Um, general thoughts. I think, you know, what I've said thus far kind of encapsulates where I'm at, where I really enjoyed it. I think it's a very good Predator film, but just an 
okay to good film in general, um, which is fine. Like for what this is, it accomplishes everything it needed to. Um, I think it kind of revitalized the franchise um, in the way that it works, not only as not a reboot, but like a reset. Um, and there are things that link this into pre-existing canon. Um, for people that are aware, I'll point out a couple of things that um, Raphael, the translator, um, is mentioned in Predator 2, I believe. And also the flintlock pins pistol that Naru brings back with her is also visible on a Predator ship. I can't remember what Predator film it was. But it, they're, they're very clearly making links to pre-established films, even if necessarily they aren't going to follow up on it. Um, so I like that hopefully we get more of this world. And I think that everything we've talked about of it being a straight-to-streaming film but having limited release, I would argue is maybe the best strategy for this because, yeah, there are there is a, a an audience for slasher films and i think that predator kind of is a slasher film but typically it's just that you've had an op alien against macho guys instead of high school students or whatever um it is at, at its core a slasher film kind of obviously not prey kind of diverges away from that in a, in a good way um but i think having a sleeper hit on a streaming service that also has a limited theatrical run is a good way of building up anticipation and demand for maybe a fully fledged higher budget sequel slash you know continuation down the line rather than maybe attempting a big budget thing that doesn't necessarily stick the landing and then killing the franchise for another 10 20 years however long um so yeah really really enjoyed it uh, i think i'm maybe at, out of oh, going out of 10 out of yeah 10. out of 10 yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah. um I'm going to stick it at like the most solid eight out of 10 that I can like bang on the money. Eight out of 10. Uh, Jemmy, what about you? I would, again, I, I have similar feelings to Sam. I would say ultimately that this, again, I don't come from a predator experience that I think as an introduction and obviously as this is a very solid mm -hmm. film, not perfect. Right. It's basic, but it's excels. It does. It takes a pretty basic premise and excels in this. My feeling, honestly, is again for what it's worth. I'm more. Ex I'm almost. I'm very satisfied with. I'm satisfied with the movie, but I'm almost over the moon at the potential because I think honestly, this just is a testament to a great start. I honestly think that similar to what Sam was saying. I honestly think that we could see and should see a Predator film on streaming every one two years, and that could be a viable thing. Because here's the reality. In this day and age, the Predator, I think, franchise, honestly, I don't think it's going to would be able to survive just in theaters. Simply because you're competing with Marvels and Star Wars who are in full force. The possibility of DC either having a fully unified universe or Dwayne Johnson movies, you know, there's going to be, you know, a lot of stuff going on. They can do more smaller scale stories and honestly tell a bunch of different stories. I want to see stories where the Predators absolutely dominate and win and there's no question about it. I want to see Jordan Peele's Predator that goes for that fully messes with our mind. Oh, you that know? would be cool. <laughs> yes, you know, I want to see different because I feel like at the end of the day, this is literally a story that has been told since the beginning of time. Hunt or be hunted. That's at its core of what the Predator franchise is. And that's a framework that you can tell a lot of different stories. This was a story that focused on themes of, you know, uh, self, uh, self discovery, you know, um, somewhat empowerment, but not in the traditional sense, but also, you know, at the same time, just telling a basic story. You can either do that or, you know, paint a canvas to do and delve deeper either into the mythology or how your characters would respond to this unstoppable machine monster alien. So yeah, I'd say I, rating. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I was, I was yeah, rating. go ahead. Uh, that's what yeah. I was going to ask. Rating, I would say, again, probably, okay, a mite under what Sam said. So maybe like 7.75. I honestly, in my opinion, just because I feel like if it's an 8, at 8, it's almost practically a 10 at that point. So I wouldn't quite say it's that good. I still think there's some stuff holding it back a little bit. But I definitely say it's a very solid movie. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so just my thoughts. So overall, I thought this movie was great. Um, second only to the first Predator movie, uh, which to be fair, I haven't watched in a while. So I'm not sure if it still holds up, but I enjoyed it when I was like 10. So, uh, but yeah, what makes this movie great in my opinion is I think it goes back to the roots of what the Predator franchise is about. Every Predator movie since like the first one has been gar- utter garbage because they overcomplicate things by making it bigger than it is, uh, making it more large scale, making it more cinematic. Like how in Predator 2, they tr- like Predator was more based in an urban setting compared to what it was in the first one. Like, but what made the first movie so great is that it was grounded. It was about a couple of soldiers in a forest trying to hunt or hide from uh, something that's bigger and scarier than them. And uh, I think Prey really captures that atmosphere perfectly, all while changing things up by, ha- by having the movie set in the 1700s, having it be a native tribe, and uh, ma- making it making it sort of a coming-of-age story. Uh, the first half of the movie basically is just, you know, character development, and we're basically getting an insight into Naru's life and how she wants to be a hunter and how the whole village is against her. And uh, yeah, I think this it's, gr- it's grounded element and small scale is my favorite part about this movie. And it, you know, props to the director and the writer. It basically wrapped up the movie in 90 minutes. And that's very rare to see these days. So overall, I would give my, a rating of around 8 out of 10. Uh, similar to Sam. Uh, but Ethan, what about you? My rating, I'm going to go out and say this is a 7.5 out of 10. It's a solid C. Um, I think while it didn't push the envelope in terms of storytelling or writing or anything like that, I think the cast and the environment that it was set in, they did an incredible job with this. Um, And I think it did the job that Sam was talking about in that it got me interested in the Predator franchise again. I've I've only ever watched the first Predator movie, um, so I don't have the most experience with this franchise. I'm more of an Aliens type of guy. I like watching the Aliens movies, more Prometheus and stuff like that. Um, But Predator... To me, has always been kind of like a double A thing, but I, I see the potential now, and I'm really excited. You know, even with these little one-off stories like this, I think there's so much potential with this with this franchise. Like Jemmy was saying, they could bring in different directors and and try different things with this franchise that would really push it to the next level. Um, but overall, I absolutely love this movie. I was entertained. Um, it definitely and the the other way I want to kind of highlight that it really pushed the envelope in that this entire cast was Native American. The producer was Native American. It was done on Native American lands. I even read um, on the Wikipedia page for this that they had Native American shamans come out and bless the set and stuff before everything. It just felt like a really authentic experience. And I think it's very nice to see that this wasn't just another whitewashed Hollywood movie and that we actually got some representation and stuff like that. And it made the whole experience feel really authentic. And I think it's just such an incredible movie. I think, especially since it's on streaming, I absolutely think this is a much watch must watch for people. If you have Hulu, um, it's just a really good time. And like you were saying, Amon, it's not the longest movie in the world. It's a quick 90 minutes, um, super entertaining. And uh, I would definitely watch it again going forward. Uh, so I'm excited for the predator franchise in the future. It got me excited for this. So that gives uh, Pre- the Prey movie uh, a total score of 7.75 out of 10, yep. uh, which is, I think, our <laughs> second movie. Um, Thor Love and Thunder taking first place with 8.5. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think that's where we wrap it up. So thank you all for watching or listening. If you guys like this episode, make sure to subscribe to the channel or leave a five-star review uh, for more content. And before we wrap up, Ethan, where can I find you? You can find me at White Cedar one on Twitter and gravy 3448 on Xbox. Uh, Sam, where can I find you? You can find me on Twitter at Sam Heaney. That's H-E-A-N-E-Y. And uh, Jemmy, where can I find you? You can find me, uh, Jemmy, that's J-E-M-M-Y underscore 421 on Instagram. And you can find me at Amon underscore M05. Uh, Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you guys again very, very soon. Peace. Peace.